Today, we go over six questions you need to ask yourself before you begin shopping for that driveway gate. Hey everyone, Jason from Iron Fence Shop. When you start shopping for a driveway gate, usually the things you focus on first are style and price. And while those are important things, there's six things you should ask yourself before you begin shopping that'll help narrow things down and save you some time. The first question to ask is if you want a wrought iron or aluminum driveway gate. Now you can't go wrong with either option. Both our Stronghold Iron and Infinity Aluminum driveway gates are fully welded and built with beefy U-frames to prevent sagging. However, there are elements of each type of metal that may make you prefer one over the other. The pros and cons of an iron versus aluminum gate come down to rust, strength, and weight. The aluminum gates will not rust as scratch to bare metal like an iron gate will. However, the lighter duty nature of the aluminum means that it's not nearly as strong and bend resilient as the iron gates. The iron gates will be much stronger than their aluminum counterpart, heavier too. The steel and iron components just require more force to bend than the aluminum ones do. Now that's not to say that a hard push is going to bend your aluminum gate and that a rainy month is going to rust out your iron gate. The fully welded construction of the aluminum gates and thicknesses we use make them very durable, just not as strong as the steel and iron. The hot dip galvanization and powder coat we use on our iron gates allow us to offer a 25 year warranty that includes the finish since we know it's done right. So while the iron can rust as scratch to bare metal, a lot of effort is put in to prevent that from happening. Weight will be another difference between the two types of gate metal. This five foot wide aluminum gate half behind me weighs about 50 pounds. Its iron and steel counterpart weighs a little over double at 102 pounds. So when choosing between an iron or aluminum driveway gate, ask yourself which of those iron and aluminum traits line up with what you want the most. Offerings may differ by type of metal too. For instance, we stock four more iron gate options than we do aluminum ones. Question number two is what height of gate do you want? We stock our iron and aluminum driveway gates in two heights, a five foot arching to six foot center height and a six foot arching to seven foot center height. I'm about five foot nine inches tall, and this gate behind me here is one of our five foot arching to six foot tall gates. Now we can custom make shorter and taller gates than these two stocked heights, however those heights are in the vein of just right. Both stocked heights are taller in the middle than most cars and SUVs. We do that so you aren't looking over the gate when you pull in. We don't want you to be distracted and crash right through a short gate because it was below your line of sight. However, they aren't so tall that you need heavy equipment to install and operate the gates. If you have an existing fence or columns, then you might want to try and match the height of the gate to those pieces for a more integrated look. Question number three is what width of gate do you need? We stock our arch driveway gates from 10 foot up to 20 foot wide in two foot increments. You'll find most places only stock in even increments like 10, 12, 14, and so on. You won't typically see odd number width gates. Start by measuring your driveway from edge to edge. That will help guide your gate width selection. The gate typically needs to be at least a little wider than the driveway. If you have a 12 foot wide driveway, you may want to consider a 14 foot wide gate. If you have an 11 foot wide driveway, go with a 12 foot gate. If you're placing your gate in a confined space such as between your house and an existing fence or between columns, that opening width measurement is even more important. Gate specs vary widely by manufacturer and you don't want to assume a 12 foot gate will fit a 12 foot opening. It rarely does. For instance, my 10 foot double driveway gate behind me here needs closer to 11 and a half feet to fit from outside to outside a post. The stated width of the gate you see almost never accounts for the post, hinges, and latch hardware. You also want to consider what you're going to be driving or backing through this gate. The width of the gate needed for a household with a simple sedan is going to differ from that of a household backing a 40 foot horse trailer and dually pickup truck through it. This gate behind me here is a 10 foot double gate comprised of two 5 foot halves. I can drive my full size GMC pickup through this gate. My pickup truck's about eight feet wide from outside to outside of mirrors, so my truck will fit through a 10 foot gate just fine if I can pull in straight in front of it and watch my mirrors. However, if I were backing a trailer through this gate at an angle or had something larger like an RV, I'd want something wider for sure. Keep deliveries in mind too. If you get furniture or landscaping deliveries with box trucks or dump trucks, you're probably gonna wanna get at least a 12 foot wide gate. Question number four is do you want a single or double leaf gate? Driveway gates come in two configurations a single leaf gate or a double leaf gate. This refers to how many gate leaves you have. This gate behind me here is a 10 foot double gate because it's made up of two five foot halves or leaves. If this was a 10 foot single leaf gate, it would be one rigid 10 foot wide piece welded in the center with a frame going clear across the bottom here. Single leaf gate options are more limited than your double leaf gate options. We only stock single leaf gates in 10 foot and 12 foot wide sizes. You don't typically see single leaf gates much wider than that. Once you go over 12 feet wide, increased leverage force, ease of shipping, and room to swing all become issues. Now that room to swing refers to the area behind the gate. 
A 10 foot single leaf gate will need at least 11 to 12 feet clear behind it at all times. So if you have a shorter driveway, that could take away parking spaces for your cars. A 10 foot double leaf gate with a five foot wide leaf will only need six to seven feet clear behind it. Lastly, keep single versus double gate in mind if you're automating your gate. A single gate will need one opener or motor on the hinge side, whereas a double gate will need two motors with one on each side and a wire run under the driveway between them. Speaking of automation, question number five is, do you want a manual or an automated gate? Now, before we jump too far into this question, just know that you can always start with a manual gate and automate it later. Now, a manual gate is obviously gonna cost less. You can start with a simple gravity latch with a couple of drop rods for a manual gate. If the gate is something more decorative where it's open all day and only closed in the evening, a manual gate usually gets the job done just fine. Now, if the thought of opening and closing your driveway gate every time you come and go sounds tedious, then gate automation may be worth the initial upfront investment. If you're automating your driveway gate, you'll wanna think about what kind of functionality you want as well as how you're gonna power the gate. There's a variety of gate automation accessories out there as well as plug-in electric and solar power options. Final question number six is do you wanna incorporate masonry columns with your gate? We could probably do a whole video on what to consider when using stone, stucco, or brick masonry columns around your driveway gate. However, let's just touch on it briefly here as it's something to ask yourself before you build the columns or by the driveway gate. A lot of people love the look of masonry columns with driveway gates. I get it, it's a stellar look. However, the biggest issue I see is that folks build the masonry columns first and then go gate shopping. They then found out that a 16-foot gate does not fit that 16-foot opening they built between their columns. I cannot stress enough to choose who you'll be getting the gate from before you build the columns. Every manufacturer varies a bit in what's required to fit their gates with posts and hardware. You'll want to know what that measurement is before you start building those columns. You'll also want to figure out in advance if you're going to connect the gate hinges to the columns directly or use metal posts between the columns. We always recommend installing the driveway gates on our metal posts. It's a stronger connection, simpler installation, and less likely to cause issues later on. We also highly recommend that you cement the metal posts in at the same time you pour the column foundation. If you want to mount the gate hinges directly to the masonry columns, you'll need to do some homework first. Be sure to engineer the column to handle the weight and leverage force of the gate leaf. You'll also have to plan for how you want to connect your hinges to the columns. There is no connect a masonry column hinge kit. How columns are built and what they're built with varies immensely, which can make universal connection kits tough to engineer. So there's six questions to ask yourself before you go driveway gate shopping. Knowing the answers to those questions will narrow down your search and help save you some time. Be sure to check us out here at ironfenceshop.com. Want information on looking for a quality driveway gate? Check out this other video we did going over five things to look for when you start that search. Now, if you have any other questions, feel free to give us a call at 800-261-2729 or shoot us an email at sales at ironfenceshop.com. We look forward to hearing from you.